Hello and welcome to part 8 of my Hotline Miami clone in Unity tutorial. Today we're covering enemy animations, so I'll just show you here. Uh, as you can see, he's got a gun, we did that last time, and if we walk in front of him, there is a gun animation. Punch him, pick up the gun, and I've not got actual punching animation, so it just uses the same one as the knife. So you can see, like, he shaved you. Goes your shaves your war and he's got walking and that. And run him down. Uh, yeah, pretty much it. Uh the bugs there. Uh I think that's to do with the uh, uh I don't know. They'd like to do with checking that they're null. They're not like game breaking, they just happen occasionally and they don't cause any performance loss, but I will fix them at some point. Maybe I'll have a bug fix episode with a particular. Oh god! Oh yeah, where I end up at range. I love that. Okay, we don't crash the game, so they should be all right for the time being. All right, so I'm just gonna go over a quick couple of changes. We've got a few changes to the sprite container. We've basically rewritten the get weapon sprites so they can return a sprite array now. So as you can see, we've got the array for enemy punching. Just and they're all here, so I think it's E, OE attack, max attack, unarmed walk, punch, max and walk, bowie walk, and I think that one's just spare. So yeah, you can see they, it's basically just the same as the player get weapon and get walk statements. They just return the a different array and have a different name. That's all it is really. And we can see in the uh, game controller, We've got the arrays of sprites here, so walking isn't actually used, that was just wrong. Uh, Mac 10 walk is only the one. Uh, we've got the bowie knife walk, the punch, the unarmed walking, and the Mac 10 attack, which is just the four, and the bowie knife attack. So that's just an update to that. That is, and um, we've added uh, to the enemy type, we've added a uh, basically, it's just a child of the game object with legs. Basically, just to act as the legs, pretty much same as the player object. Uh, let's see. On the weapon controller, we added a small bit here. Basically, in the animate script, it'll have a, it has a boolean to check a method to set that say that it's attacking. So basically, it'll just call that when it's ready to attack the player. And I think I've got a, the get attacking actually is not used. I don't think that's used anymore. I've just so I should really remove. Code I don't need beforehand, but oh well, I just need to get this out because I've not made a tutorial in a while. So, yes, is there anything else I put in? No. Oh, wait, uh, is the pickup weapon here? Set weapon, yes. There's also a. Uh, it call, the it calls the enemy animate uh, method. So, it just basically, that just basically sets the torso sprites. I'll show you that in the enemy animate script. And there is literally just an enemy animate here. And I think we took out the, and you'll have to take out the line which sets the torso from the enemy weapon controller. So line 76 or PA dot set new torso here. Which was actually, no, that wasn't it. I don't know, sorry, I should probably, that was probably a book. I forgot to take that out. My bad. So that'll just keep the that'll just take out seventy five and seventy six if you've not already done it. So they were just old sprite assignments. Now we can do the new one, which is through animating. And is there anything else I've got to cover? Nope. Right. Uh, what did I put in the AI? I don't think I put anything. I'm not a boy for it. Weapons. Did I put anything in here? I don't think I did. Oh, I have a. I just, I've got a method for returning the speed uh, value, which is used for the movement here. So just just multiply the how fast the player moves, and that's basically it checks whether, like, if it's just patrolling, it'll move slower, so the animation will play slower. But if it's like pursuing player or going to grab a weapon, it'll move faster. Uh, enemy attacked. This is just, it has a, 
basically there's another method in there's another two methods in anime animate to disable and enable legs just so like they don't appear when you've killed the like because when if you don't have these in it in the legs will still appear on top of the corpse sprite so you don't want that so i'm just getting rid of that just to say it stops them appearing before disabling the actual script for enemy animate either temporarily for being knocked down or permanently for being killed by a bullet or knife or whatever I like, really. and now we've got to the meat of it which is the enemy animate script so we've got two public sprite renderers which if you just like if you have one enemy that you're building in the scene and then to make that into a prefab you can just assign what's that which is Facebook, uh, you can assign the uh, sprite renderers in the uh, inspector. So if you can see here, we've got the enemy attack. We got this, it can find the sprite renderer from the enemy attack, which is object game object, which is basically just like the main parent game object of the enemy. And uh, it's got the leg sprite, so we can see that the leg sprite is here. It's got just the sprite renderer, and it can find it in the script. Uh, so you can assign them, and if you have a prefab, and every time you instantiate one, it'll get the it'll have the legs for that instance of the enemy. So that means you don't have to like use game object dot find game object with tag or whatever just to get the components out of it, which is kind of neat and an easy way to do it. We got the enemy AI, so it can work out whether it's attacking or not. Or I think I don't know if I need that, but just be in anyway. I'll work out if I. If I have, uh, need to get rid of it with, when I'm fixing bugs, a bug fixing episode. Uh, so we've got a sprite container, which is just a reference to the sprite container, self explanatory, used for getting the sprites. And we've got three public sprite arrays, which are public just so I could see what was in them to make sure they were all right. We've got the torso sprites for whatever weapon they're currently carrying. We've got the attacking sprites for attacking with the weapon. And leg sprites are always the same, they just use the player legs, because legs are legs, don't really need to be different. Uh, so this is just assignments. Uh, initially it just sets the sprites to be null, so it'll just return the default without a weapon. And it gets a weapon controller here, the AI, and finds a sprite container and whatnot, and gets player legs. So basically, if if it's moving, it uses the enemy AI that is in this instance of the enemy to check if it's moving. And if it's true, then it'll animate legs. As you saw here, it says, it'll say, where, where is it? If moving equals true, and then it'll just say, you can see it's moving. And then, let's see. And then if attacking is true, it'll animate the attack. If I, but yeah, basically, if attacking is true, which is a boolean found here, yep, it's just false at the start. And then there's like, I, I, sorry, I just missed out these things. Basically, there's these two are the timers for the torso and leg animations, and these are just the values they reset to, which you can check, which are changed in the speed settings of the team, which I'll go through in a minute function or whatever it's called and these are the counters for going the, through the array string is just the weapon that it gets from the string is just a reference so it can send that to the sprite container and get back the correct array of sprites and enemy weapon control is enemy weapon control um, basically there's two things here there's a value checks and leg reset and animate walk just animates the torso when it's not attacking and animate attack animates the attacking animation so I'll just quickly go through the uh, value checks. So basically, that doesn't work. I know. I don't even need that. I don't think I need that. That'll be another thing for the bug checking. And this was taken out and put into the actual animation thing, so I don't need that. I'm just saying a lot of things I don't need. I should have checked this before, but oh well. So I'll go through the animations. Uh, leg reset. Oh, leg reset speed, actually. I should go through that. So... This just sets torso sprites, so it'll set both of them at the same time. It's done from the enemy weapon pickup. When it picks up a weapon, it'll send a name, then it uses a name to pick it up. Uh, this just disables legs. It sets the sprite to null and disables the legs, and this re-enables the legs. You don't need to assign the sprite because it'll get it automatically. 
uh, let's see, speed. Speed, it, this leg reset speed gets the speed from the player, uh, from the enemy, and if it's more than 2.1, uh, each the sprite will change every 0 0.03 seconds. So like if it's moving towards a player or a weapon, and if it's just patrolling, it'll do it every 0 0.05 seconds. Right, that's it. Okay, now for the animations. So basically, uh, this has, this is debugging, so I could work out where the animations were playing. So this basically checks for when you switch between the, uh, when it's like you say you've stopped attacking and you've gone to uh, back to walking, it'll just make sure that the counter of the torso isn't above the array limit and won't give you an error. So it'll just reset it to zero, so the animation will start again, just to, to avoid errors. This is basically just timer counts down, and if like basically this is just because uh, the this one is only this is only needed because the Mac Ten carrying uh, doesn't have an animation. It's just the one sprite because you'd want to sort of aim rather than just walking around with it. Uh, like loosely like the knife, so it's just one sprite, but if it's not, it'll animate, so it'll be from the counter. And basically, counts down, if it's less than or equal to zero, it'll either increase the counter, if it's not at the end of the array, or reset it to zero, and then set the timer to torso reset. And basically just the same for the attack, except it sets the attacking boolean to false when it does. So it looks, it's similar to the player animations, where it sets it to false, and resets the timer, but if the enemy is still able to attack the player, it will instantly get set back to true, so they'll start firing again, pretty much. Uh, same goes to torso, time dot dot time, if attacking is false, I don't know why that's uh, uh but whatever. Wait, oh wait, oh wait, well, no, this is a old one, I don't need that, that can go. That's not needed anymore, I hope. Just checking what's not giving me an error. What's that? Bleh. Don't know, don't care. It works, so it doesn't matter so far. Uh, done those checks, they're all there. Uh, what else? I think that's about it, actually. Hopefully, I've actually pressed record and not fucked up. So, yeah, I'll just quickly go over the sprite uh, enemy animation script and give you another demo of how it works. Uh, torso, legs, uh, animate walk and animate attack, animate legs, at leg reset speed, set attacking, value checks, which aren't really needed. Uh, set torso sprite, reset counter, which just sets counter to zero. It's for torso, I'm not sure if that's even used, but whatever, and set attacking. Enable legs, so set attacking just sets attacking to true, used in the enemy attack. Uh, enemy attacking, or weapon controller, sorry. Uh, we've got the disable legs and disabling the enemy animate for deaths and knockdowns and re enabling it for when you get up. We've got the get movement is new here, so it just returns a float, it's get speed. Returns the speed, simple. Let's see, uh, we got the uh, setting the torso sprite to the enemy animate from the weapon pickup. So when it picks all weapon, just sends a name and it gets the right sprites. Uh, let's see, it's got the set attacking. So when it attacks, the animate no, it's animate script knows it's attacking and can attack. And sprite container is just new, it's basically just a copy paste job, but we changed the name of the function and it returns different arrays with stuff. That's pretty much it. That's just a player animating script, so we don't need that. I'll give you one last quick demo, and I'll have to work out what I'm making next time, actually. Well, I'll just maximize that, actually. Maximize. This will make the fucking file massive. Oh, well. Punch. I have to do, like, a cursor or something. So you can see he's over here. Oh yeah, uh, one more thing I found is that 
Oh, I don't like that. Oh. It's a bit glitchy, the on it. It's like uh you see how throwing weapons goes like further or closer like it puts more momentum the further the mouse is away from the player. Like I thought that'd be a good it's like sort of an unintentional feature. Well oh god, I think you can die. You know right. Basically if you like click on the mouse and drop the weapon, the weapon doesn't go that far. But if you like have the mouse far away, sometimes oh, it's hitting summit. Okay, maybe it's just fucking glitchy. That's another bug I'll have to fix. Oh well. What do I do next time? I don't know. I might have to do heavies or something, or maybe executions for when you're not down. Maybe just like a foot stomp type deal. Anyways, cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I've updated my uh, game, Loud or Quiet. It's just a. I've redesigned the bank level to be a bit better. Um, it was basically a new tile map way of making levels, which I've tested, which I'll probably use in this tutorial to show you how to make levels. And yeah, what else is there? What else? What else? What else? That's about it. Go play it. Links in the description. Like, comment, subscribe, all that crap. And I will see you next time.